Hey everybody, I'm Bill Currington, Pastor of St. James, and I'm standing outside of the Independent Baking Company here in the Five Points area right off of busy Lumpkin Street. So glad you could join us today. In these days of social distancing, you don't have to have distance from God. God, in fact, is as close to you as this piece of bread is to my hand. It was called the bread of presence. Now, back in the Old Testament days, there was something called the tabernacle. That was the Jewish people's portable church. Wherever they traveled in the desert, they would have this makeshift church they would set up, and then later on, they were time to, it was time to move out. They would break it down. Inside the tabernacle, which was their makeshift church, they had a, a golden table, and on top of the table was located the bread of the presence. In fact, you can find mention of it in the Old Testament. This is called showbread, other different kinds of terms you have for it. But in Exodus 25, 30, it says, put the bread, this is what God is telling and giving instructions to Moses about. Put the bread of the presence on this table to be before me at all times. So um, the priests would make some bread, something like this. They would create stacks of it, six high, and there'd be two stacks of this bread, kind of like this flat bread. And they would have it there on this golden table. That was called the bread of the presence. It would be made on a Friday night and then set out there. The priests were the only ones who could actually eat this bread. So it was a time of celebration when they all got together on Friday night and uh, going into the Sabbath, they would have the bread of the presence they could eat and then they would change out the old bread from a week ago to fresh bread. So the bread of the presence was a symbol to the Jewish people that just like they needed food to be able to eat, to live off of, so they needed the food that God gave them of his presence so they could live. Now food experts will tell us that, nutrition experts as well, tell us that there are five major food groups. It's the meats, right? It's beef, it's chicken, it's fish, and so forth. It's also fruits and vegetables and grains and dairy. Did you know they actually left out an important sixth category? A sixth category that's even more important than the first five. Chocolate chip cookies. So, yes, just like we need our six major food groups in order to live each day, you know, so we need God as well. You know, think about it. If you go days on end on a fast and you don't eat anything, you'll find out very, very quickly that your body's energy will just fall off of a cliff. I mean, you will be listless. You won't feel like doing anything at all. The energy just simply is depleted. Well, the idea is, is that the further you live away from food, the weaker you become. Well, Jesus Christ said something very interesting. I'll read it to you from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, and this is from verse 35. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never grow hungry. So, just like we need the six major food groups in order to live, Jesus is declaring, hey, listen, you get... By my design, you get your nutrition, you get your vitamins, you get all your stuff that you need for living each day from the food that I supply. But the further away you live from food, the weaker you'll become. And the further away you live from me, the real bread of life, you will become even vastly weaker. See, friends, life without Jesus breaks down. It explodes. It detonates. It's a dead end to nowhere. We need the bread of life in our life. You know what? As a Christian, if you stay distanced from Jesus, what will happen is, is that you will become weaker so that you no longer have the strength to resist temptations. You'll become weak in your desire for God so that you won't even feel like praying or even read the scriptures any longer. You'll feel weak in your love for others and you'll become a much more self-centered human being. 
rather than living for the God above and for the people that He puts around us. Living apart from Jesus is the most dangerous position we can live in when we get away from the bread of our presence, who is Jesus. Because when we get further and further away, then the devil has us exactly where he wants us because he always picks off the weak one. Now, as I mentioned, the priests were the only ones who were allowed to eat the bread of the presence, to bring it into their bodies. The good news, living as New Testament Christians in Jesus, is that the bread of His presence is available for everybody. And you know what? It is so easy to bring the bread of presence into your life. It's as easy as asking a question. Hey, Glenn, what day is today? Pretty sure it's Tuesday, Bill. Okay, all right. See, that did not take much effort for me to ask the question and for Glenn to respond to the question as well. It was just as easy to bring the bread of the presence of Christ into your life. You do it like this. Jesus, I've got two job offers. Which one do I have? Which one do I need to go for? See, so you just open yourself up for the bread of the presence to come in and to guide you and to lead you. Jesus, I'm really stressed out right now. Um, because I'm afraid 26 million people have already lost their job. I might be the next one in the firing line. Jesus, would you just please, would you please and give me, come and give me calm. You've just brought the bread of the presence in your life to allow him to come and bring his calming peace inside of you because he is the Prince of Peace. Jesus, I, I don't know which major I should take in college. I don't know what you script me for, what kind of job I should get. Jesus, would you please help me? Would you just go in front of me in all these decisions? You've just invited the bread of the presence into your life, just like you can simply hold a piece of bread and invite it right into your mouth. It's that easy. And when you live by the bread that Jesus gives of himself every day, in limitless supply, it'll make you stronger, more powerful in Holy Spirit than you can ever imagine. And your joy will be up here. Now, Glenn, why don't you and I go inside and see about getting a chocolate chip cookie? How about that? Booyah! All right. God bless you all. See you next time.